in the operation of your program to bring about standardization for them, but also to aid you as we seek to build stronger communities. And so today we're looking at effective grant writing. Can anyone tell me what is a grant? Two words. And if you do an internet search on grants, you'll see thousands of different types of grants. And the most important thing to remember about it is, in order for you to qualify, you have to apply. So if you don't really apply, then you can't really come in and get it. Once you get that money, you have to be able to use it in a manner that your project said it would be and reporting. So basically that's the presentation there, but we'll go through some small steps as we go um, talk more about grant writing. So again, with all of our presentations, you'll see the vision and mission and the model. It's really just to set the mindset in terms of why we are here and also why you are here. And so we also thank you for being present with us taking time from our busy schedule, but really to connect and empower communities to foster safe and strong neighborhoods. And then to provide strategic leadership to assist you and our model bringing safe communities one whole soul at a time. And so key terms to remember as relates to this. So as part of this program, the ministry decided that we would give out a grant. Why? Because you know your communities best. You know what your communities need. You know how to galvanize people and to bring, of course, a lot of these projects that you want to fruition. Now, not every project may be a grant project related to the ministry, but whatever you're given, of course, we show up, we're sure that you'll use it to benefit your community. So this particular grant here is funded to the Ministry of National Security. And of course, it's given through the NNWC, which is the council, okay? And it can be used for different reasons. The total amount we have here is $5,000, but that's for the entire grant program. Each item will be given up to $1,000. And some of the different projects we have here, like identification of signs, dogs and cat building in Spain, and of course, landscaping. Not everything will be. So for example, our colleagues who spoke about the undocumented persons in the community. That's really not a grant funded program. But if you're talking about the food frenzy or talking about establishing a safe house, that's more a type of grant program. But that doesn't to say you can't assist with that because the first one, the undocumented, will be a conversation with another ministry would have to assist. And so grant writing has a process, it's a cycle. And regardless of whether you're applying for a grant or not, I would encourage you to go through this cycle. For your neighborhood watch group, you should be able to identify your needs and focus of your community. What is it that we're trying to do for our respective communities, whether it's crossing or Murphy Town? Okay, we also have some templates we'll get into to help you determine what is important to address. But regardless of whether you're doing this, this will provide focus for your neighborhood watch group and everyone in your group will know what it is they're supposed to be doing. Once you've done that, then you can begin to access funding, which is our grant. We also have some other grants here that you can apply for, okay? But also, too, many of the family islands have winter residents who also provide assistance to the communities. And so this entire process can also be used to target them and businesses as well. Because what it does, it gives you a standardized process of how to present the things that you want. And also it has measures built in for accountability. And that's really what you're looking at. Because many of the winter residents and other persons' businesses these are persons who are managing five Fortune 500 companies. So this is a standard for people accessing them. And most businesses, large businesses, usually dedicate about one to two percent of their earnings towards community projects. So it's important to know that. And so again, like I said, the same process. So the next thing to do is develop your general proposal and budget. What it is that we want to do. So that involves some research. So if you want to do the food frenzy, what it is that we need, what type of foods do we need? Someone said yesterday sent some apples from NASA, but then you have to consider if we're sending it by a plane or by a boat, would it be able to really last once you get there with being damaged? So you have to really be considered of all of the different factors to make your project successful. The next cycle looks at prepare specific proposal. Now with grant writing, if you go online, when you're submitting a grant, you have to follow the steps that has been issued by that company. Because if you go online, you'll see many different types of templates for grant. The ministry has a particular template. You can add to it, but you cannot delete or ignore any particular section. That's important. And for some of the grants that we'll introduce you to a bit later, the same thing. Whatever their process or template is, you have to complete it as is. Because if not, 
we also go and inject the power without even being looked at and the same thing for the ministry and then of course submitting it with a within a specific deadline period and all of this will get into again once that's done it will be reviewed by the committee which i'll explain a bit later then you receive an award letter and you can accept or decline and then you must carry your project and then of course with everything else is the evaluation and, and filing of that process letting us know that you accomplished your objectives or maybe you fell short but it's saying but this cycle is a standardized cycle and run by the university so these are some common terms that you will become familiar with as you go through the grant writing process. Applicant. The applicant is not the president. The applicant is the name of your neighborhood watch group. So whether it's Crossing Rock, whether it's Cooperstown, that is who's applying for the grant. And we'll have that in the template because it's not about just one individual person. Then of course, the neighborhood watch groups are those that are registered. And Mr. Major asked a question earlier about what is the purpose of the registration certificate. And yesterday, someone asked, what's the difference, or what's the importance of being a part of this program? Well, this is one of them here. The ability to open up your bank account to be recognized, but also to access our grant or any other grant that may be available, okay? And of course, you definitely want to demonstrate the need for it in the community and how it will benefit the community and enhance it. And it's not only about crime, but also just bringing that camaraderie in. And I think it's a killer of the potential that's been asked that question yesterday. But again, these are common terms. The budget, this refers to the financial plan. How will you spend that grant money once you receive it? Then, the grantee. The grantee is the person who receives it, or the entity, I should say, in this case, the neighborhood watch who becomes the grantee. And then, of course, the project, the activity that you're going to do using it. So these are common themes that you, or terms that will, you'll be introduced to for this particular grant program. Now, how to determine the neighborhood watch needs? Anyone can tell me? or suggest any ways, how do you determine what is best for your community if you're applying for a grant? Yes, so that's very important. And like I said, even if you don't apply for a grant, you still want to assess what's happening in your community because the, the community is made up of different types of people. And what may be important to you may not be important to someone else, but you want everyone to be involved. And so that's it there. Who is your community? What type of people? Do you have mostly elderly people in your community? So should we focus on a program for elderly? Do you have young persons in your community? Should we focus on a program for more younger persons? Do you have more professionals in your community? So you focus on those needs there. Now, once you begin this process here, you must be able to uh, identify the issue. Is it an issue that can be addressed? What are the needs for that particular issue? Also, when you're looking at accessing grants, you must be realistic. So we said already it's a thousand dollars. So to say that we want to construct a community complex, then of course that would not be ideal for this particular grant program. So be realistic with what you are going to be awarded. Okay, and you can be incremental. Okay, now the next thing which is important here too, how you go about doing this, the group process, looking at focus groups, looking at town hall meetings, looking at a voting process. Some persons, and we know many different people, sometimes are not vocal in a meeting of the community. But they, everyone has feelings and have an opinion on something that's being proposed. So something like this, you could set up like a survey monkey that's confidential, and they can send in their opinions of what they feel we should be focusing on as a community. Okay? Um, as you walk about, make interviews, little surveys, and observations. But you want to make sure that the community is involved in the project that you are choosing to undertake. Okay? Now, again, and several things to keep in mind, the best, to, they know the best issues they face and more likely to know the solution as well. So no man is an island. And so yes, you can be the president active, but everyone has a voice and an opinion that matters. Okay? And of course, community is also a great resource and funders because they may be able to have connections with some people. So let's say you want to um, work on restore a car. They may know somebody who may have equipment that can assist with that to support what you're doing in the grant writing process. Okay, now before I go on, are there any questions thus far? Okay, good, sorry, so we're all the same. All right, so the next thing as it relates to this, just some general guidelines to consider as it relates to this particular grant program. Again, focusing on improving the community. And so you should keep that in mind when you are applying for the grant, because those are the criteria that the ministry is going to look at. How is this going to improve that criteria? 
And a very important thing that I did not mention, rank is competition. You are competing against people. So when you're going through this process, you have to be meticulous and you have to be accurate because there are other communities that are also competing for the same money. Okay? So it's not a guarantee. Okay? Now, and then of course, um, we have the amount, which is $1,000. It doesn't have all of the be dedicated to one particular course. But if you look here, you'll see that. So for example, a neighbor watch group can request 200 for community garden, 100 for a library. So it doesn't all have to be spent on one area. Okay, you can break it up as long as it pulls up to $1,000. It doesn't have to be with $1,000. But if it were me, of course, I want to maximize as much as you can get. Okay, so that's important to know as well. And the project manager will be the president. Okay, so you have to be able to manage. You don't have to go through all of the steps, but you will be the project manager for the grant because it's given to your neighborhood watch group. Okay, and of course, you are free to get the assistance of other persons who may be able to assist. Other components to remember in this here your grant, you can match the grant, meaning projects with matching funds and on time. So you can get volunteers to assist their time, they can donate supplies, you can get discounted materials. So it doesn't mean that, okay, because I get this from the ministry, that this is it, the end all. Seek other assistance from persons, whether it's monetary or whether, like you said, in labor, supplies, and discounts. And so we have those examples there. Now, things that you can use the grant money for, this is important, but not limited to project materials, rental equipment, course, specialized labor, heavy equipment operators, muralists, clean of supplies, and delivery charges. What you cannot use the grant money for is for someone to write the grant for you. Okay? You cannot use it for routine maintenance, ongoing operating expenses, advertisement promotion, and definitely um, active event parties. Because you really have to be, it has to be something substantial that we can see that, hey, this has improved. If you're having a party or things like that, um, that's really not something that's going to benefit everyone. So the money has to be able to go back into the community and you have to be able to see that so that as many people can benefit as possible. And if you have any questions, of course, with this, this will be in. Usually when you send on the request for grants, all of this criteria is there as well as to what you can apply for, what you cannot apply for. If you are concerned or not 100% certain, that's where the national coordinator comes in and you can contact and say, well, I'm we're thinking about putting it towards this. Is that allowed? Okay, and that's a simple phone call or an email to make sure that you maximize your chance of being able to receive the grant funding. So, now, the chairman, Mr. Wong, went over this yesterday, but this is just a sample of the form to assist you with your needs assessment, okay? And basically, again, and you may have, you may have multiple forms. So, for example, if Jason or John wants to invest in a park, restore a park. You go through this whole process. You may have someone who wants to engage in a cleanup of the community. You may have someone who wants to go, let's say, the food frenzy. So those are three different options that you have. And so what you do is you're assessing the three of them using this method so that you would then determine which one is the best for use of the grant. So again, it's all about transparency, accountability and everyone having the opportunity to participate okay and so you do the purpose of the cleanup the purpose of restoring the park the purpose of the food frenzy you're looking at the timing what is the time frame we're looking at to accomplish this to have the park ready maybe by next summer um the food frenzy want to be able to start during the harvest thanksgiving period then you're looking at the background the factual information how will the food frenzy benefit the most community how will the park benefit those in the community? And they're giving justification for each one of those. How does the cleanup help? Then you're looking at any issues that, it may, that may be present. So you say, okay, well, you know, we want to do the food frenzy, we're getting some assistance from NASA, but when the produce come, it's somewhat damaged because we're using the label. Okay, we're looking at the, the park, maybe there may be some areas with the, the land that we're using. If you're looking at the cleanup, maybe it's bigger, we don't have enough people in the community to assist or equipment. So you're really going step by step and being meticulous and really analyzing, is this project going to be worth what we're doing? Because you don't want to fail. And as Neighborhood Watch presidents, to really get people on board, you have to win. 
I mean, it may sound trivial, but people want to be a part of a winning team. So if you can win a grant, and you can really get money in your community and improve your community, you'll find more people coming out to support your program. And that's really what it's all about. And then they're also looking at the, um, the presentation, okay? Um, looking at the money should be able to see how the money is being spent. And then, of course, we have the inclusion of the evaluation of it. So, again, this is a template you can use if you have multiple suggestions by multiple people in your neighborhood watch program. And we're suggesting, advising that you perhaps use. And then, this form here, which again, the chairman mentioned yesterday, looks at the outcome from the previous presentation. So, you decided, that, okay, we're going to go with the project for the food frenzy. We can see more benefits for that. And then, you're going to explain. Why do we agree to this initiative? Why we don't agree to this initiative? Okay? Um, and then, of course, the analysis you could say, okay, so for the cleanup, we had about one to three. Um, the rating for that was one to three. We had, for the food frenzy, a seven to nine impact. So you're really being, again, transparent and accountable as you go through this process. And all of this is in your administrative manual. I think I have it. Uh, it's an administrative manual on the section seven. Okay, so any questions so far? Is it making sense? Yes. yes. Yeah. I just have a comment, Dr. Bethel, and that is that when you talk about grants and all of that, um, remember <coughs> not to submit um, your grant the day of your event or a day before. Because we've seen that issue at the, at the ministry. We had a, a, a president who wanted to do. Um, a NEMA, uh, what do you call it, the NEMA Disaster Preparedness, Cert. right, a, um, certification for, for some of their members. Excellent idea, but I got the call at 4 p.m. today, and they start tomorrow, and they need $3,000. You know what I'm saying? What kind of miracle you want me to wait? You know what I'm saying? What kind of miracle you want me to work? So you want to submit it in sufficient time? You want it to sub sub submit it in sufficient time so that it will get the kind of traction that it needs, the kind of attention that it needs, and, and, and all of that. Okay? Absolutely. And so, all of the pressure. Okay. okay. I, I understand that this is the time that they have to submit the deadline. But in this case, you would, do you have, say, like a man? Uh, yeah, we're going to get to that. So all of that in terms of the preparation, that was just the unit override. The first part of the presentation was introduced to terms. The grantee, um, the um, neighborhood watch day, and the project, sorry, the president and the project manager, those terms and the project. Um, and then looking at some of the things you should consider for your assessment. So, this part now looks at imagine we've already gone through that. We have three different ideas. Again, we had a food frenzy, we came up the park restoration. We decided that the food frenzy is what we're going to focus on as a neighborhood watch group. So, the next part looks at preparation, preparing for the submission. And like most grants, there's a time to submit, um, to prepare, to submit, and also for review, and for you to receive notification. So all that we have come to right now. I'm starting with this. I think you are I saw on the panel now, they said unspecialized labor. On the allowed? No, unallowed. Um, so do they allow for, for you to submit for labor, or there's no special? If you have a specialty, you are not. You know, it, depend, it depends on the, on the specialty. Because, if, say, for example, we have grant writing. We gave you a template and we're there to assist you. So, we didn't want you to spend money on that. The goal really is for us to be able to see the um, whatever you have awarded for, for it to have the most impact. So, if we're paying really persons for labor, we're really not being able to see the benefits of the community. Okay, but if it's some specialized, let's say you need to. Um, clear down some land, that's specialty, but you'll be able to get that because we know that's a move towards the completion of your project for everyone to benefit. Okay, so we'll have that there. Okay, so now we've already decided as a group that we're going to focus on our food frenzy. And I said, I mean, we're taking it that we're all in this together, the food frenzy, okay? So just to remember, you have to allow lots of time to prepare for writing your grant. Because there's a form that we've developed that you have to fill that out. And again, it's competition. Okay, the best man wins. Okay? Now, based on the research, we've seen that approximately 25 to 40 hours is needed to complete a grant application. 
my hours. So you basically got to go two days. Of course, it's not going to be done at the same time, but that says to you that a lot of consideration has to go into putting the information together. What's going to give me the best information or give me the best chance to be awarded this particular grant? Read the application in its entirety. Don't just rush in. And follow the template we've given you. If you go online, you'll see many other templates. That's not the ministry's template. You can add in other things, but you have to complete the ministry's template as is. Okay? Use relevant and necessary charts and pictures. So we're talking about our food frenzy. Okay, you want to be able to have this. So you can look at other sources where this may have worked. Okay, in the US there's a lot of community gardens. So you can speak about how being able to provide food. Because if you look at Maslow's hierarchy B, that's one of the basic things we need as humans. We need food, water, shelter. We cannot do anything else if you are hungry or if you don't have a safe place to be. It allows you to really pursue other goals. And so use data to support your claim that you should be awarded this grant. And then, of course, again, if you have any questions, the lovely lady and the lovely gentleman here will be more than happy to assist. And if need be, you can refer you to other persons in the ministry or other sources to assist you. Okay, so now, preparing your proposal. Again, can I stress enough? Follow the instructions as given. Any extra detail can be put in an appendix to support what you're doing. It's always good with grants to align with the person who's giving the grant. Like you have some philanthropists, they may focus on children, they're very passionate about children. Some may be passionate about elderly. So you always want to try to focus on issues that are close to the person who's giving or wanting the grant. And so in this case, this program is in Vision 20. 40. And so it's supported by both <coughs> major political parties and it's really about improving our communities for everyone. And that's me, that's you, and that's those to come behind us and those who really are here but may not be able to do much for themselves, which is really our elderly population. So it really should look at the objectives of the ministry and the objectives of this program. And the Vision 2040, you can put in an online search and it comes up. It's a voluminous document because it's over 490 pages. But if you go in there, you'll see where they speak to this community initiative and this community project. Okay, so if you're writing a grant, what you're going to do? Go look at Vision 2040, see some of the terminology, and try to align your plan, the blue frenzy, to this here. Okay, and then from yesterday with Ms. Adelie, be clear, be concise, be specific, and make it easy to read. You don't have to tell us how smart you are, you need to use plain big words. Communication is about understanding me, understanding what you've given me as we see it. Okay? And that's all. So make it as simple as possible. And justify your funding request. Okay? Um, keep in mind, costs must be both reasonable and necessary. Proofread. Okay? Get someone else to read. All right? Engage in good storytelling. And again, as they could watch groups are made up of different people in our community, target those who may excel at this, something like a great opinion of the picture. I can tell the same story you tell, and you can add in 10 million things, and your story sounds much more exciting than my story. So you want to find people who are good at this graphics, good at writing, good at editing, good at typing. Okay, so you need to pay attention to this. So it's not just the person doing it. And for me, um, yesterday we mentioned different committees that came under um, Ms. Abby's presentation. You could have a committee for your grant proposal or grant submission. Targeting people who are good at this. Okay, if you didn't have a grant, this is one of those you can target. Submitting your proposal. Do not wait until the last minute, because since we've been in Africa, I think we've been up about three times. Okay? <laughs> so, the first time you reach an hotel, the light went off. Okay? Today, and then it went off later and then it went off today. Okay? okay? So, nothing is worse than grants you should submit it by 5 o'clock. Okay? And so you know that's the computer stuff right there. So do not wait till 4 45 and then the light going in the public. Well, you know, um, you know, the light going off and then just be going off and she's gonna say, and she will say, but you have all month or two months to turn it in. She will say that. Okay? All right. So please, you have to be able to submit ahead of time. You would want to try to get your granted at least maybe a week to two weeks ahead of time, honestly. Okay? You want to try to do that. And if there's something you realize that maybe you need to change, it gives you an opportunity to resubmit, 
it again and you realize, okay, maybe I wouldn't need a mistake. All right? Now, grant, depending on the grant in this particular case, we're allowing for e applications, which is really emailing it, or you can have to handle it. I would go with the electronic, okay? Because last week, we're going to lose the leave at 12 o'clock. We didn't leave at 12 o'clock something. So you go to that place, I'm going to give it to my, my son. He can take the ministry. And they go to the airport and they get stuck. And they cannot leave until 5 o'clock. You already missed the deadline. Okay? So go ahead and submit electronic. If there's nothing with electronic submission, you always have your record. Okay? But please make sure you attach things up on. We've all done it, I think. Well, I'm sending an email, yeah. And they get a call. Please don't attach that. Human nature. But that's not an excuse if you don't turn it on time. Okay? But if it were me, I would try to get one in hand and electronic as well. Because if you send it electronically and you get the cash one, it's still really late. But if you send it by hand early, so we can do this earlier, it's still in. Is there a, a time frame you all have? Yeah, we're going to get to that with the time frame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. set. Right, it's going to be set. And the good thing about that is that means if you don't get a submission for this year, uh, what we also plan on doing too. Again, transparency. So let's say who was down the front. Well, we're going to share that report so people know what who was down there. So now you have enough time to begin prepping. Uh, prepping. And all grants work on a cycle. Okay, so we can set cycle as it relates to that. Okay, we'll come to that. Okay, now, uh, and then, how fresh can eyes read your proposal before submission? Because group thing, if we all hang together and you start reading that document, you start to see what you want to see. That may not be there. And someone else looking at it can see the same that you don't see because you've been working on it for so long. And that's human nature. Okay? Now, make sure all of your forms, contact information, and signatures are included in the application. And the signatures refer to the president because, again, the president will be the project manager for the grant. You have to sign. If there's not sign, then it's really not a formal submission. Okay? Common mistakes that people make. Not completing all of the sections in the grant application or the process. Not submitting the necessary documents. Yeah, I said, well, okay, um, I can take a picture of the and send them in. Because that means the application is incomplete. Everything has to be submitted. Failing to allow for your time by hand delivery to make it all electronically. And I've given several examples. Not reading the application in time. Before you begin to write anything, you should read it. And read it not only by yourself, whether you do it with your executive team or the whole membership, because sometimes what someone may see, you may miss and vice versa. So it's important to have as many people involved and not following the guidelines and failing to proofread. Okay? So, management of the award funds. What we're recommending for you, we have given you the instruments you need to open up your bank account. And you should need to have a bank account because we're not going to send. $1,000 with no one here for you. So the money will be transferred. So you have to have a bank account. But your management of those funds should be separate from all other funds that you have. It allows for better management and transparency of the monies. Use appropriate public relations so that people know exactly what is happening. And if you need any assistance in terms of promoting, again, you should help with that. Find the ministry as appropriate. Okay? Um, Keep the national body informed of your progress. You have to account for these funds at any time. Any time government monies are spent, the financial secretary can come into your establishment or entity and ask for an audit. And persons have gold and handcuffs for some shady business. I worked in education and they should some people on handcuffs. Why? Cheating and overtime. Okay? But it happens. So, your funds, your allocation plan, how are these going to be spent? It must be transparent, okay? Be prepared for an order if something should happen. And report preparedness. You have to report on how the money is. And the grants, you cannot say, well, I was going to pay the um, heavy duty equipment guy, and I went to get the money someplace else. It doesn't work like that. Whatever you said you were going to spend it all, spend it all, you have to spend it, okay? So any questions so far? I mean, it's not answer your questions coming. We're going to get to it, okay? So next thing, the template. This here is the template that we're going to be, the ministry is going to be using. Oh, I didn't get the presentations. Sorry. Okay, but for us here at the ministry, just going over it, the 12 inch font, okay, one inch margins. 
the page should be at the least. Like, oh, these random things, no, it's not. Because if the paper drop, you ever had a uh, presentation, the pages are not numbered and they drop the time against you. Yeah, that can be really miserable and uncomfortable, okay? And you should have it either fold up, bind up, or pick clip or staple. Same simply now, but really, you have to pay attention to detail. Okay, and then sometimes there's a few of the issues like, yeah, it's all right. So all brands have an executive page. And it's general information. The date, the name of the name of watch group, the president's name, who you're targeting for this um, brand, the objectives of the program, a brief description on the background of your name of the watch group, the dollar amount you're requesting, um, the period that you'll use this for, and the signature of the present. Okay? This is the format that we're going to use. And this is the format that we send up for requests for grant. This is what it's going to be coming to you. Okay? Now, that's your executive page. If you look up here, this says, I don't, can someone read it for me? In the blue? No. Okay. <laughs> General grant request information. Maximum of four pages, double space. Do not go over the page limit. Okay? You don't want me to read any. You don't want me to read an epistle. Okay? Okay? Just think of it. We have 160, uh, over 160 groups. If all of them submit for a grant, you really think the committee is really going to go sit down that long. Four pages is in three versus ten double space. So again, be mindful of the competitive process that you're going through. Okay? And so just going through some of them, we would like to know your history. Do you have any mission, your goals of your community, if they get up? Um, do you use best practices? Uh, are you considering getting funds from someplace else? How will this build the party in the neighborhood watch group? Um, what measurable comes do you expect from it? The long term will come, okay? And how you're going to evaluate your progress, all right? And then, of course, this is the last part again, more paper cell space. If you are awarded the grant, you have to report on it afterwards. You don't just get the money and you send it and that's it. Okay? Um, you have to be able to report on it. So this is the exact form that will come up to you. Maybe a little tricky here, but generally this is this is the format space. Okay? Now, just to give you a little sample of the executive summary. This here is the same template. This is it filled in, just to give you an example. And we can actually send you a sample of a um, grant writing proposal based on this, okay? So date, again, the date is there. The project name, this one is Culture Kids Integrated Literacy Project. All right, we have the neighborhood watch group. We have the contact, the email, okay? We have the project name, remember, your president, your vice president, all of the information. Um, we also have the, the guest contact person, the project purpose, to enhance students' education experience, and improve their literacy by providing them with an integrated curriculum filled with tradition, skills, beliefs, and values based on Shantanu. It's clearly stated exactly what it is going to do. All right, the target population. Hope to assist over 400 deserving students who reside in the West End, in this area, or in Bahama, okay? You also have the geographical area, okay? I'm explaining here, we said this is important to know that <coughs> Students, um, yeah, improve them again to improve the reading and comprehension skills of those particular groups and grades. Okay, and it says four and below class. So we want to know a specific how will this grant benefit those particular persons. You have the population, persons between ages 12 to 14, okay, or those who are integrated now. The dollar amount here, that's equal to 5,000. You have a budget breakdown. Okay, so we have here in this case $3,000 for training teachers in general methodology. Volunteer assistance, we're having that, but that's not coming at a cost to us. Remember, we said you can match what you're in, in kind with your grant will assist. So you have a person here that's not a cost. Then the books that you need for the total amount. The period, so from September 13th to June 13th, which is the school year, and then the signature of the president and vice president. So this is just a sample of following in step by step. Every one of these on the left was completed. The match board is on the right. And nothing is left up. Okay? Now we're not going to go through the whole thing, but that's just a sample. We can send you a whole project completed with it for you to see. Okay? Now the good part. So this part here looks at the selection criteria. 
Uh, sorry. Yeah, there's a question about the executive summary here. Is this available online where you can complete it electronically? We'll have it, we'll have it available for you. Yes. Oh, so okay. you, usually the grants, once you yeah. um, send a request for a proposal, everything is given to you electronically, you just fill in. Right. So you'll be given a package like this and you just fill in there. Right. Okay, so you that you over. So that's how that will be here. So this is how the ministry now will determine who gets it. Because again, we also want to be transparent with you as well. Okay? So Several things we're looking for. The quality of the project design. Okay? Is this, was it put together well, well developed? And going over a lot of those things. Um, does it match the, is it closely aligned with the objectives of the ministry? As it does closely align with the objectives of this Labor Watch program? The need of the project, is it a great need? And again, you said food friends and people who need food, and you could justify that. There's a lot of literature on that. The significance, will it address this problem? When it comes to food and being able to sustain people, that is definitely a human need. That's a human need and a basic human need. Okay? And of course, being able to evaluate the project. So those are the governing principles under which the evaluation will be. But more specifically, the committee will consist of seven. An odd number of course of this will be running on tiebreaker. We have the national coordinator bill, the chairman, legal counsel from the ministry. Uh, police representative, a bank and accountant, someone from civil society, and importantly, the ministry may substitute a member of the committee for a subject expert depending on the nature of the grant request. Because of course we don't know everything, and so we want to be able to find an expert who can say, okay, yes, this is legit, this is how this will work. Okay, but there will be seven persons that form that committee there. Okay? And again, same thing I would have said, it has to align with what the ministry is all about and what the program really is about. Okay, promoting the neighborhood watch objectives, looking to improve the community, foster community spirit, empower citizen leaders, foster violence, how can the community and nurture citizen involvement for positive change. Okay, now you have in your package the criteria that the committee will use. And again, we're being transparent with you. So it's going to go from zero to four. Innovation. How innovative is this project that you're going to engage in? And we have exactly what a four will get you. Okay? Um, it, it definitely benefits the community down to one. No innovation describes a specific potential improvement. Okay? And then, of course, they can write their comments. Then, justification for the project. Okay? Addresses specific need for a four, for a one. No, there's no evidence that is presented in this proposal. Relationship, what I got through, relationship to the NNWC is to achieve a vision and or overall objectives. We have the criteria for five. It aligns with the vision and objectives of the NNWC. Then for four, no exceptional relationship between the projects and the agenda of the Neighborhood Watch program. Feasibility. It can this project be kind of old this project be accomplished essentially what we're asking here with what you are going to receive. Okay, and four, it definitely aligns, and for zero, it's efficient. Efficiency of, I think that's tactic, an approach. 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 Okay, all right, and so again, we're looking, it can improve upon what is going to happen in there. The plan presented lacks sufficient details to judge how it will fit into the context of the Labor Watch program. And then going on to assessment, sustainability. Is this something that can be sustained? You don't want to just one project. Some projects may be you complete it, that's all you need. Other projects may need to be ongoing. So can this be sustained by the community? So you may start with the feeding frenzy, us give you something. The next thing step may be, okay, we want to acquire a plot of land so that we can engage in community gardening. Um, ministry AIC a few months back was offering um, packages or kits for the community that came to um, article, but they were offering kits that you could get. Okay, so this is what we're going to be using again. It's we're having transparency with you, and in turn, we have transparency with the uh, community members. Okay, now the part that um, everyone to know project notification and award. So the request for proposals will go on the third Monday in January of every year. Okay, and it's on a yearly cycle. All requests should be hand delivered or emailed in the second. Monday in February. But again, 
If we are working on a cycle, then that means you know that this is coming up. If there's any changes in the criteria, we notify ahead of time. But at this present time, we won't be having any changes. So that means you can begin working and thinking about what it is that you want to do. Even if you don't win the grant or work, you can begin preparing for next year. See what other communities are doing. Now, I would say to you, because I'm a better good person, I wouldn't share what I'm doing with anybody else without me. Yeah, I'm part of the Okay? So, that's just a good that. All right? But, then the location of the board. Grant winners will be notified and announced publicly by the fourth Monday in February. And that's usable, because we have four pages just a minute, not 20 pages. Okay? Now, we want many pages of pictures, that's fine. But we have sufficient time. And, of course, we'll be notified by our um, email and official letter when we hear it. Completion deadline. All projects that are awarded grants must be completed by the fourth Friday in November, the whole year. And then we also go on the next slide, we talk about a period we took initiative. Now, this doesn't mean that everything will be completed, but again, you'll be communicating with the coordinator to let them know the progress and how things are going. Because anything can happen sometimes as well. And again, the email and the number. Okay, so any questions with this? It's kind of clear with that? Okay, great. So use of the grant money, you have 90 days in which to begin your project. And it shouldn't be a problem because you've been planning all along. Okay, you know the time period for submission, you know when you're going to be awarded and to engage your project. It can only be used in accordance with the application. Yes, because sometimes things can and do happen, but that's where communication comes in. So please communicate with the ministry, the national coordinator. Okay? Um, depending on the nature of the project, the industry reserves the right to response incrementally. Okay? Um, and then also, too, this is very important because you know we have the Procurement Act and a lot of things have changed as a waste of time because this is government money. It isn't private money, it's government money. So there's certain procedures and we have to follow. One of which is three quotes. If you are assisting or requiring some outside assistance, and that forms a part of your record. So if you want to pay um, the heavy equipment to clear the land and he's going to charge you $200, you should have a quote from two other persons and you choose the best. It doesn't say you choose the lowest, but you have to have two quotes and pass just the patient as to why we chose this person. This one is reputable, we've seen him and we're going to be working before. But this is very important, that part there. I certainly I, I agree with that. But at the same time, we would advocate for by local or using something oh, yes. vendor. Yeah. But when you come to some of the family island settings, you only sometimes have one. So mm -hmm. now you're going, you know, to Well, if, if, if that is, well that's, that's understandable. Right. That, that's understandable that depending on the island or the cemetery, that, that may probably understand that. But in most cases where you can and you have a uh, competition, then we expect you to get through. But again, that simply needs to be communicated. That we, you know, on this island we have one minute and it has to be verifiable because you say it and it's, it's not to have any black blood, but if you say it, doesn't mean that we won't investigate to determine that is truthful for obvious reasons. Because again, this is ministry funding and the ministry is responsible and accountable for these funds. Dr. Okay. Bell, I'll just give an example. We experience the same thing in NASA too. Even though NASA seem to have everything, there are some vendors that only do, when we were doing the members' role for our book, right? We went to a, a certain place. And even though that they could do it, they didn't have a vendor ID and they didn't have no TIN number. Okay? So we had to go into somebody else and when I prepared the documentation for approval, I said that the only vendor that is available with a TIN ID number was Ms. Rivera, okay, because Dawkins, who also can provide the product, does not have a TIN number. And so it was a cool. Once you provide your justification and there's communication, and you know, it is it, verified. Yes. Yeah, all right, yes. Okay. So um, now, in addition to this particular grant, we wanted to provide you additional sourcing. Okay, and I'll just reiterate again that a lot of the family islands have winter residents and corporations that are set up shop here. And so we really urge you to... Um, my concern is this, because there's a competition, right? 
Uh, what about those smaller settlements where people just want to help, but they're not good at it, right? You know, cannot find anyone to really make an impact. They send in their stuff after year, year after year. They don't get uh, any help. Do you all consider that and say, well, you see, I have a whole Murphy town then. But before, before that even happens, you can tap the ministry. And we can align you with someone who can assist you, whether it's someone in the ministry or some other entity. Yeah. So, for example, we have the House Information Services. That person that each ministry has a liaison from that agency. They can assist. Okay, we have persons in ministry that can assist my section. Research and development section is one of those sections that can, that can assist people. And what we do is we take your conceptual idea and bring it to fruition, put it on paper to, for you. Okay, so there are resources, but you cannot wait until the week before and say, I don't, I may, and I don't, 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 So, in addition to targeting local businesses and the residents, these are several other grant options we have here. The Corporate Social Investment Initiative, and we put where it's located, and they're responsible for the missing 1% of earnings from gaming houses. And this ties to this next thing here, which is the gaming regulations. So part of the legal referendum was not down. Part of their, oh, you want to go back. So part of what they will um, do is 1% of their earnings will go, should be going to back into the community. Now for them, they don't have a template. Therefore, you can use the template that we're giving you. Take off the end of the of course. But you can use that template to submit. Because it's a template that if you go online, you'll see similar um, tenants or items that are universal to grant money. You can't use that. But this here, and I think we spoke with Mr. Parkinson. No one has applied for this one yet, and Ms. Davis sent out a communication. Oh, no, we placed it out. Ms. Davis sent out a communication to all neighborhood watch presidents to tap into this, and she has yet to receive one response. And this is something that we can help you with to fill out, to apply for this grant. And you see here, and you have from 5,000 to 10,000. And the good thing is, the chairman is um, a former, it was assistant commissioner? He's a retired commissioner. Retired commissioner. Retired commissioner. Which means, he's not the chairman, he's a member of the committee. Oh, a member of the committee. And that's good, because this, he's, he's coming from the safety and security sector. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you have people connect, closely connected, they're not going to pull any strings to you, but it will give consideration. So this is one of those grants that you can apply for. And we can combine it with what we're going to um, And as for the areas, again, remember we spoke about areas trying to align with what the grant um, offer is, is, is interested in. So this grant here can go to social concerns, charity groups, education, sports, entrepreneurship, and tourist development. So it's very broad. And this is one of those things broad. This is really trying to get to as many opinions as possible. Some of you are more now. So please, if you can, tap into it. And residents from the outside are going to send requests. Again, we haven't had one person or one little watch group apply for this and it is available. Okay? So, and that's the gaming regulation that comes from, if you want to look it up, gaming regulations 2014. If you put it in Google, it'll just pop up. So, we have another grant here. Now, even though this is for over the hill, with good justification, you can still tap into this for over the hill priority. So, it focuses on projects that get kids developing your community. All of the communities and the family islands, with the exception of the new development, are historic. Each of them has a history and is a Fox foundation and grants offered to Bahamian projects that came to empowering Bahamians. And for this particular grant here, same thing, this is their website here, tells you a little about it, and you can um, access it online. And, you know, again, um, I can't remember this one has a template if it doesn't mean you can use the template we've given you to apply for it and all of the supplemental information. So again, we're trying to empower you as much as possible, your local businesses. Uh, I think we're saying that place you're saying is a Korean resort. Tap into those places, you know, but again you want to make sure that you are presenting your information as competitive with anyone else in Spanish who's presenting. Often that you say, oh yeah, we need this, we need that. And sometimes I think this is even not. I'm getting but again, they're careful about the tools and resources. Have their own um, expectations and mm -hmm. requirements, uh, and no one reports or whatever. Yes. 
So does that mean then that we would be required to do two reports, then one for the foundation itself and one for the, the national? Yes. Uh, yeah. Any any time and you grant, if you get ten grants, each yes. of them has uh, their own reporting criteria. Right. And, yes, well, and again, that's where the planning comes in and tapping into the resources in terms of human capital of people in the organization to really say, okay, well, I'll manage this one, I'll manage that one, but ultimately the president is um, responsible. Now, I'd also like to mention, because your labor watch group comes under the ministry, the ministry also will need, if necessary, to look at what you're submitting as well, because again, your program comes under that, and that brings the to the ministry as well, because if you have to I didn't get the money from you, I got it from the Fox Foundation, right. but you are still registered under the ministry. Right. And in yesterday's report writing, we have audited, and that is important, but here's the basic funds. Like I, I, I think we were yesterday, right? Yeah. Like I said, the best way to break up a good thing is a woman. Right. Okay? I gave you money, and I know where the money went. Mm -hmm. And also, what you do is also going to have the program. So let's say, Someone in Africa receives the Fox Foundation and you don't use the money in a responsible way. No other neighborhood watch program <laughs> can go to them again. Yeah, so you've now stained the entire program. So with this comes a lot of responsibility for the PS grant writing. Nothing else is important what you do. This grant writing and receiving money and funding, whether it's from a big corporation or whether it's from just someone giving you $10, yeah. it puts a stain on the entire program and the good work. Of the program, okay. So that's that's very um, important. Okay. All right. So with that, are there any additional questions? Like I guess I know it's a lot of information, but we are here.